Maybe even finally get our feelings sorted out. Good for you, by the way. You've been conspiring with the Skittle Squad, haven't you? You're a fruit! Hey. Ha ha ha. Oh, I love Ruby. Ooh, I love Ruby so much. Me, the Ruby Tuber, Bushim Zero. He made three Ruby videos going on four. He really loves Ruby, and so does his audience. <laughs> oh my god, why do I keep doing this? Hey guys, Bushim Zero here, everyone's favorite Ruby Tuber, and nothing else. You are a worthless bitch ass. F Your life literally is as valuable as a summer ant. I've made three Ruby videos, and this is the fourth one. And at this point, I've had to just kind of accept that I uh, might be a little bit um, hyper fixated just a tiny bit. I don't know why. But Ruby Volume 9 has gotten me back into the franchise in a very big way. Mainly because it's, like I said in the previous video, go check that out by the way, um, that it is the best volume of Ruby and it's not even close. <laughs> It's the best the show's looked since volume 2 and 7, like, the choreography's back in a big way, there's cool animation and visual choices they're doing, not just in the action, like how volume 2 was only good during action, there's like genuine good camera movement and sh** that they're using in this volume, it's very, very good. There's some good, there's some pretty good voice acting being handled in this season, like I was genuinely surprised at how certain things are handled, especially with the return of a certain character, and that's a spoiler though. And oh my god, it's the best opening of all the volumes. See, Ruby's always kind of had this issue with its other um, openings where the music was pretty good and then the visuals were a little off. Like, look at this shot of Blake going, ah, or like Salem doing this, this weird puppet thing or when uh, Cinder hits Zawarudo right here. There's always something off about it or maybe the song's really bad. I'm looking at you, volumes two and three. This is the first time they've gone close to their ideal of make anime opening because they've got the foreshadowing They've got the visual symbolism. They've got the twist reveal replacement of a visual. That's good sh And inside's a really good song to be honest with you inside's a really good song and most importantly There's some really good character interaction Wow, if I only focus on like six characters instead of like 17 bajillion most of which don't really matter I can actually have my main characters who haven't actually gotten focused which is weird still by the way I could get them to interact especially in regards to a certain ship that everybody still argues about even though it's literally the most whatever thing and the only issue was that they just didn't develop it seeing all this good stuff has made me really really happy with volume 9 but then I had a thought oh god all these good things are one because I've been starved a bit, go watch the previous video to talk about that. But also, like, it highlights the things that the volume does wrong even more. Um, some of which seem to be out of their control until I realized that the budget cuts that cut- that ripped three episodes from this, um, volume's, like, episode link came because they wanted to do the DC crossover, which, um... I feel like I'm a teenager. This... is not okay. Look, look, I'm just, I'm not going to say this was a mistake. I don't like it. I mean, I think the problem with this volume is that it's Ruby making up for things it didn't do before in this volume. And we're going to go deeper into that. But before we continue into the video, make sure you like and subscribe. As you can see, I've made a lot of Ruby videos and I'm planning on doing more content that's tangentially related to Ruby instead of just being more Ruby content. So if you're interested in that, make sure you like and subscribe. Comment down below what you think of the video and what other videos you want to see me cover. Again, I don't know why I keep doing this. You guys are the ones enabling me. This is your fault not mine clearly i'm not obsessed um let's start off with um the elephant in the room this was apparently a volume that was always planned by monty the the idea of the ever after and the characters going to the ever after and having this sort of full bring-esque arc is something that monty wanted this is the first time in the history of ruby that the monty's vision meme is actually true right uh, i'll i'll let you guys win this one fellas you got me you got me on this one monty's vision is true for specifically this volume and fittingly to the monty um vision this is a really good thing that has had the gaps bridged because um it was a good idea that needed to have a, a duct tape bridge between that and another point. Like I mentioned, subject number one, Bumblebee.
The Bumblebee episode was probably one of my favorite episodes of the season because it was just two characters interacting with cool visual metaphors and a good song. I love seeing the way Yang and Blake interact as like lovers because up until this point they barely talked and maybe stood in the same room but now they're like fully interacting like you know they didn't do this before volume six they didn't do this they like maybe interacted once a volume but now they're interacting the entire volume it's really really good and it made me realize again i here, here's the thing here's the thing i want to have a rant about come here perturbed passengers sit with me whining watchers it doesn't matter who ends up in a relationship it does not matter who ends up as long as it makes sense and you have justification and based on all the people who are gonna come to my comment section ranting and raving, saying that I'm wrong for saying the Bumblebee was just kind of forced at certain points, there can be justification as long as we see them interacting as a couple. And when I see them interacting as a couple, I like it. I love that shit. In fact, there's a lot of these cute little scenes they do throughout the volume that are really good. It also led to the funniest meme of all time, but <laughs> we'll talk about that. I just don't think it's normal. <laughs> we have Weiss finally feeling like she has a personality again. Oh my god, Jean is cool. This is the coolest I've ever seen Jean arc. He's old, he's depressed, he's badass, he's doing all these cool things, he's living with the consequences of his actions, he's going through, he went through hell and came out a warrior. Oh man, this will come up later. This will come up later because uh, as, you'll, you'll see, you'll see why. And it ties into the PTSD they suffered at the end of volume 8 especially with the character of Ruby Rose. And if you want to see me talk about why Ruby Rose retroactively being handled like this is pretty weird, go watch the previous video. But to sum it up, they didn't have a good grasp on what Ruby's character arc was supposed to be, so it kind of feels like they're retroactively fixing it by giving her giving her a new one in this. And it's a pretty good character arc. I mean, it's literally the girl it's literally the my bro is dead, he's gone, but he's right you there know, on my back. The Ichigo, my heart, lives on the, the Edward Elric, the sort of like they tried to save everyone but they can't save everyone so you, that doesn't mean you're a failure that just means you did what you could kind of character you know that sort of thing this arc is a hundred percent a full bring ass arc it is the characters reassessing where they're at in their situation and coming back out it is definitely in line with the Montsium anime homework and it's honestly an arc that the series did need but like the fact that it serves as fixing ruby's character arc instead of enhancing it kind of feels like a problem and you know what else is a problem hey look at that this volume's only 10 episodes usually these volumes are 13 what's going on oh god that doesn't make any sense your plan doesn't make any sense they cut out three episodes of this volume in order to make Batman sound like the dub voice for Deku from My Hero Academia. I have powers on their world. <laughs> Wonder Woman, you don't understand. In this universe, I'm a Faunus, and I could do more good, good here than I could have Gotham City. One for all. <laughs> and because of three episodes missing from this volume, there are critical story issues that are presented now because the, the end of the volume feels like like there are supposed to be story elements that bridge the gaps but they're just not there this time not because of incompetent writing but because there's literally episodes missing from this this show really did just get zero one but not by the worldwide disease but by disease and directed dvd form <laughs> It, it, it is it is very interesting seeing the problems with volume 9 not necessarily being with the writing but with the lack of time that it had because there's so many good things about this volume that you could see having been there but being rushed because they had to pack it into the last the last two episodes namely the summer rose backstory is introduced and we get this good moment of summer rose reading a storybook to child yang and ruby and in this thing she says that i love you two just the way you are which is a very good thematic thing to have but it le and it leads into her sh going off having a really good interaction with Tai Yang and then like we see what really happened to her the night that she died and I feel like this should have been a long an entire episode dedicated to Summer Rose raising Ruby and Yang so that we see how Ruby's vision of what Summer Rose was differs when she sees the backstory so then we get Ruby's lesson that everyone is facing the weight of expectations but sometimes you are enough. <laughs> 
I love Tengen Tapa Gurren Laga. But like, we don't get that. We get this, this, and this. And I don't feel like this is enough for, to feel the emotional weight of what happens next when Ruby comes to the conclusion that I'm enough. Because it goes from her realizing that Summer Rose lied, and then she goes, should I just give up? And then we hear the line at the beginning of the episode, maybe you're enough, and then she gets the thing. I feel like there's no moment, like in Full Bring, where Chad goes, Ichigo, remember a moment where you were proud of your Shinigami powers, and Ichigo literally remembers every moment that he ever saved someone using a Shinigami powers or Ichigo comes to the conclusion I can't even begin to count them. There's no big moment like that it's essentially condensed into two lines and that's entirely because they're missing an entire episode of wow this could be fleshed out because let's be real this shit, Ruby is the blade is me moment is hard. This shit's hard. And like, it still hit me regardless. I was tearing up during this, unironically. And I just was so upset that retroactively, it didn't feel as good as it should have. In fact, there's a lot of things that are just like, retroactively not really handled well. Like, the fuck is this? What, the, the, what, what really is the purpose of the Jababawaka doodle? What does he do? Murder? Does he just murder? I don't know. I, to me, it seems like if, if it murders you, you, you can't be reincarnated or something, which is what the tree does. It, what does he do? What does, what does he do? We're moving on. Uh, we get one line about it. Uh, uh, we get a vague world of remnant ass explanation of what he does. And again, Jean doesn't really get a uh, good resolution. We kind of gets it at the beginning of episode 10. We'll talk about it. We'll fucking talk about it. I'm not happy about it. I'm really not happy about it. And I think Neo didn't get nearly enough. I feel like there was supposed to be more interactions with Neo and Team Ruby in the Ever After, but we only ever got the few, and then Nishi shows up in Episode 9. Which, again, the, the Episode 9 was really, really good. Sorry, Episode 8. I'm a dumbass. But like, again, these are more issues of I wish I had more rather than before where I wish this stopped happening. But then episode 10 finishes the fight. We get this cool badass fight scene at the end. All the characters finish their like, have their character arcs and they finally go talk to the tree, which is a blacksmith. And then, oh my fucking, are you? No, no, not the stupid. God bullshit again. No, dude, stop adding to the lore. I am so sick and tired of seeing these two. All this did now, now I'm even more confused. No, not even confused. You know what this does? I mentioned in my previous video that when you look at the God storyline, it's the dumbest shit ever because it stops being this cool um, moral battle of the of human's nature to do destruction, but also to do good. And instead becomes these two dumbasses were tricked by one person literally pulling the dad said I couldn't go to the dance, no ask your mom kind of logic, right? They were literally fooled by one person pulling shit that I pulled when I was six. You, like, you cannot tell me that that's how, that's the entire lore of this series. And then they did it. They just did it again. And now, on top of that, we find out that the actual lore is that the tree created the gods who were so bad at their job that they were kicked out <laughs> because <laughs> they made the cat who, um, I guess, hugged people. And then the Jabubawapadapple, who just murdered everything. One of those seems like it did more damage. You're telling me that the center of this lore is built upon dumbasses who were so bad at their jobs that they went to another world to be more bad at their jobs. It's, it's mind-blowing. What else is mind-blowing is you take John, this character who was hardened by years and years of experiences and trauma and then, and then, you, and then, like we try to figure out like a, an emotional like end for his time with Alex. I was expecting to see Alex some point in this story. We never do. And then we find out she turned into a knife that turned Jean in, into old him. You're fucking, you're fucking. Guys, he made he made fun of his voice. He's like, why does my voice sound like that? Doesn't my voice sound weird? If he if he acts like he used to, and he's not like hardened by war and sadness i will actually question why he was here in the first place i'm not fucking with you if he starts if any if any of these characters start acting like they used to and aren't changed by this experience i will just scream and so there is this sense of like these complaints that people are having where the vol end of volume 9 kind of feels like a cop-out because without knowing what happens next 
I, I could totally see them using this as a cop-out, thus, like, negating everything good I've said about Volume 9, because this volume that's supposed to be this full bring, have the characters reassess and be permanently changed by in order to move forward for the rest of the story in full force, this sort of story arc, and it ends up just being, like, neglected, I will scream. I, I will not be able to handle it. Um, one thing I will agree with um with all the ruby detractors is where why where are the rest of the people who fell off are they just dead where did they go oh no no we're back we're back in remnant we're back in remnant fuck you dead people and like even with all this good even with everything that the volume did all these cool scenes, the, the commentary on depression and suicidal thoughts and finding your purpose and realizing that you don't have to be weighed down by expectations because the you that you are is enough and all these really cool things and like little actually being a cute mascot who's fun and I love this guy and all these cool things. This volume was cut because they wanted to make a shit ass DC crossover to save their brand and you know what this did is it just made you look worse. Cause ain't nobody watching that shit. I'm not watching that shit legally. <laughs> Why? You had something. You had the one volume you could influence people to change their minds about Ruby and you cut it off by three episodes for this. Oh, I can't take it. Oh, I don't want to see Ruby never. I don't. I don't want to see Ruby never be able to end like it's supposed to. I finally, I finally saw what Monty's vision was supposed to be, and it got. And Monty's vision got cut by Twink Batman. I'm screaming. Well, that was unexpected. Uh, moral of the story is, um, Ruby Chibi really is saving the brand. Make sure you support Ruby Chibi. It is, um, being published on YouTube.com right now. Thank you guys for watching. For more Ruby content, make sure you comment down below. Boosham Zero, you are literally milking this. Please stop. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.